<laughs> I have no announcements, so we can fire away. What's that? Um, the Sarkozy visit. Yes. Uh, the, the setup for it, the Rose Garden News Conference, mm -hmm. the dinner in the, in the uh, family quarters is being perceived as kind of the full treatment, um, the full royal treatment, um, for lack of a better word, and kind of a makeup um, with the French president. Do you think that's, that's accurate? A makeup for? There have been perceptions that he, there was a snub, that he didn't get quite the treatment that he thought he should get in, in their prior visits together. So do you think that's an accurate way to view it? And no, I mean, I, I, I can't you speak make to decisions the decisions about how to treat leaders, what sort of, you know, do they get the Oval Office pool spray, do they get no cameras, do they get Rose Garden, do they get a dinner, not a dinner? I mean, those are all decisions yeah. that are made, so. I, I mean, I, I, I can't really speak to uh, what's based on what somebody bases prior uh, logistics on. Uh, I think you'll hear the president talk about <clears throat> the very important and close relationship that he has with President Sarkozy and that our country has uh, with France on a whole host of important issues that they'll go through today. Um, the global economic recovery, uh, climate change, financial reform, uh, Afghanistan, the spread of nuclear weapons, uh, our partnership in the P5 plus one uh, in dealing with Iran, all of which are tremendously important to both nations and uh, both nations uh, I think there's a very uh, strong relationship between the two uh, between the two leaders. I, I don't I, I, I've never heard anybody say we're going to do this because we did this last time so. Intending to send any kind of signal with the setup or the schedule of events? Well, again, obviously it's an important ally. Obviously, the work that the two presidents have done together on, on the issues that I just mentioned uh, is significant. Um, there'll be a bilateral meeting between the two. Uh, we'll have uh, we'll have the uh, the two give statements uh, and each take a question. Uh, and then they'll have uh, have a private dinner together. Uh, I think that is uh, somewhat. Uh, I mean, it doesn't seem totally out of the ordinary. You've to got me. more than that. Yeah. Who? More than a month later. You know, I gotta say, I've 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 been puzzled by the notion that uh, uh, <clears throat> Netanyahu spent uh, more than two hours sitting with the president. I, I prove it by me. I didn't see it. I, well, you'll just have to take our word for it, I guess. But. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the crossword puzzle. Yes, ma'am. Uh, financial regulatory reform. Mm -hmm. Paul Volcker said today that regulatory reform will be completed this year. Yeah. And there have also been some reports that the administration, that there's about a push to get the bill to the president's desk by the end of May. Mm -hmm. um, is that kind of a timetable doable? Mm -hmm. And what kind of progress can you make without Republican support? And to get Republican support, what are you willing or prepared to give up? Well, let me, uh, first and foremost, I don't think that's an unrealistic timetable at all. Uh, obviously, we've got a bill through the House, uh, a bill through committee, uh, unamended. Uh, nobody on the Republican side even offered an amendment. Um, so I, I, I think the next piece of business that the Senate will take up will be financial reform. Um, you mean late, late May? That's I, I don't. I don't think that's unrealistic. I, I think, without a doubt, the president would would like to see, uh, with his signature, strong rules in place. Uh, certainly, prior to the two-year anniversary of the collapse in our economy. Um, so, I think we're on a pace to make uh, to make those changes quite quickly, and and I think. It's important as we move forward that we ensure, as I've said many times and as the President has said many times, uh, that we don't have the conditions in place that allow the same type of thing to happen now that happened two years ago. In order to get Republican support, um, I think the, the President is clear that we are not going to compromise on what we believe represents a very strong piece of legislation. Just last week, Senator Corker and others uh, said they thought Republicans would support this legislation. The, the president's going to outline a, 
um, the plan that he believes uh, best puts those rules of the road in place, ensures a strong uh, independent consumer uh, finance protection agency, uh, provides the type of uh, clarity and disclosure that uh, the American people need to judge uh, financial reform. So I think we're on a, a path to do that. And those are the point, those are things that are not negotiable. Th those are things that the president has spoken about for uh, for quite some time. Uh, they're not negotiable with the president. They're not negotiable with the American people. Jake. Uh, Secretary Clinton on Monday uh, made a request uh, to Prime Minister Harper to keep Canadian troops in Afghanistan, saying that they could be uh, serving in other uh, uh, in capacities beyond uh, combat if, if, if need be. And uh, that was rejected today by Prime Minister Harper, saying that the Canadians are withdrawing their troops by 2011. I was wondering, A, if you guys have any response to that, and B, um, what that says either about the U.S., uh, the ability of the Obama administration to convince the Canadians that this is their fight, just as it is for all Western countries, or just the basic fact that the Canadians seem to reject that? Well, uh, first of all, the fact that they were transitioning their troops out of Afghanistan uh, has been known certainly by this administration and I think by uh, most of the world for quite some time. Right, you've got to uh, try to commit some well, I, I think I, I'm, uh, we checked in with State on this. I, I think there seems to be, uh, uh, on their part, uh, State's belief there's some, a little confusion here. The, the, the Secretary of State first and foremost wants the Canadians to continue, as you mentioned, to be involved. There are a host of civilian non-combat activities that Canadians uh, can and we hope will contribute to. They're a valuable partner in our coalition. I would also say that understanding that this was, for quite some time that this was going to happen, uh, we have seen uh, a dramatic increase in NATO contributions uh, that will make up for troops that any troops that have to rotate out. Okay, and then the other uh, question <coughs> has to do with uh, the new um, nuclear disarmament treaty with Russia. Um, you guys heralded how the president pushed back strongly on the notion of there being any uh, linkage with uh, missile defense. Uh, the Russians are saying that there is language in this treaty uh, that addresses missile defense, and that's a big victory for them uh, since it's the first time it's been acknowledged in a treaty. Uh, whether or not there is, it's actionable, uh, it's still in the treaty. How do you explain that discrepancy? Well, I, I would simply refer you to what uh, uh, Secretary Gates, Admiral Mullen, Secretary Clinton all had to say on this last week, uh, that there's nothing that precludes uh, what we're doing in Europe uh, as a part of this treaty. Is this the Russians trying to save face? Uh, you, a better question for the Russians than for me. Yes, sir. Okay, in addition to all those things that you pointed out that the president would be discussing with Mr. Sarkozy, mm -hmm. uh, will he be pushing him to uh, commit additional troops? No. To There's no ask on the table to do that. No. Well, no, yes. I, I anticipate that they will discuss uh, progress that uh, needs to be made in training the Afghan National Army and the Afghan National Police. Uh, and uh, I have no doubt that they'll talk about the contribution that France has already dedicated uh, as, the, I think, the fourth largest uh, coalition contributor. Uh, but there's no specific ask on the table today from President Obama to President Sarkozy to increase that force. And I'm on, Robert. Let, let me go yeah, and I'll come back. And how many cars I... Um, do you feel that he is the right leader to get the job done? As the president said, the U.S. will get the job done there. Is he the right person to get the job done? Well, Dan, understand that uh, he's the elected leader of Afghanistan. Uh, we are, uh, we will work with and we will expect certain things to come from uh, his leadership uh, based on what we're helping them do uh, in setting up uh, appropriate governance as well as rooting out the Taliban and its extremist allies. Um, I, I think the president has been clear with President Karzai, quite frankly, going back quite some time. And uh, I read out a call that the president made to President Karzai um, just after he was reelected, that the president was clear uh, that we had, that, that it was up to them to take important steps um, on bettering their governance, understanding that in the inaugural he laid that out in the, uh, in the conference in London, uh, he laid out some positive things. 
we've seen some um, progress, but as the president said, that's slow progress, and we understand this isn't going to happen uh, overnight. All right. Let me. You had a follow up on France, and then I'll come over there. Follow up on uh, actually, Jake, and uh, the question on the training. And when you, you talk about non combat mission for the Canadians in particular, uh, do you include training the Afghani uh, police forces? Well, well, I, I don't want to get ahead of their, the discussions that are happening now are with the Canadians. Uh, certainly, um, uh, certainly, there are a host of non combat roles. Uh, obviously, some aspects of training would be in that. Obviously, you couldn't, we're not talking about pairing trainers with uh, combat brigades that are out. Uh, that obviously would be more combat focused. But understand, too, there's a, a whole host of what we were just talking about in terms of governance issues uh, and uh, civilian activities that you've seen a tremendous increase on our side uh, in dedicating those resources over the past year uh, that, without a doubt, uh, uh, other nations can help with uh, as they have. Uh, in the past. Uh, yes, ma'am. In Pittsburgh, Sarkozy was asking for a deadline about Iran, and it seems that the deadline was December 31st. What does President Obama is expecting from President Sarkozy about Iran? And I have a funnier question. Can we have some details about the menu tonight? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I have no idea what they're eating, but I will. Uh, I will. I will check. The French. Uh, the French want to know. Well, I. Uh, I will. Uh, I will check. I. I don't even have. Uh, I come unarmed with even the slightest knowledge of what. Uh, what is on the menu? Uh, uh, look, I think if you, as you mentioned in Pittsburgh, um, Prime Minister Brown, President Sarkozy, and President Obama. Uh, at, at an event that was certainly unplanned, uh, let the world know of additional activities that the Iranians were undertaking um, that were uh, far out of bounds with what was expected of them, and certainly as it relates to the IEA. Uh, I, I think in, as we move forward now, uh, the leadership of, of both presidents uh, will be tremendously important uh, in the upcoming push for uh, uh, sanctions uh, and additional uh, efforts uh, that are needed to get the Iranians to live up to their many responsibilities that they failed to live up to now. Uh, I think there's no doubt uh, you'll hear the President talk about the fact that uh, President Sarkozy uh, has has been a leader uh, on this and has spoken throughout the world on the necessity of uh, the Iranians to live up to those responsibilities. Helen? What does the president think about the rising tide of right-wing extremism in this country, vandalism, anger, hate, guns? Well, uh, I, yeah, I, I think, uh, uh, look, as it relates to some of what we've seen around this health care debate and this health care vote, I, I think the president's uh, message that he's delivered often um, that in a country as strong and as rich as the United States, and when I talk about rich, I mean in values and tradition, um, our country was founded on uh, open debate, passionate open debate. But we ought to be able to disagree with one another despite the passion that we each hold uh, we ought to be able to disagree without becoming disagreeable, and I would say that. Violent and right. But I would say that, on, and I would say that on both sides, that um, there's no doubt, and I think again you heard the president say this yesterday. There's no doubt that if you look at the rhetoric around some of these debates, uh, it, it, it uh, and you've heard the president. The president talked about uh, the notion that if you pass this it's Armageddon, yet somehow we've made it uh, almost a week since the signature on the bill. Um, look, as it relates to the, the, the uh, indictments yesterday, uh, obviously uh, I, I have not talked to the President specifically about those except to say that uh, uh, certainly we will vigorously enforce the law uh, uh, against anybody who, uh, who seeks to break.
Who's, uh, who's coming to dinner tonight? Uh, the two presidents and uh, the two first ladies. That's it? Uh, two interpreters. So it's an entirely a private affair? It is. You just have to take my word for it. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> so they're both getting pictures, right? Uh, I, don't, I don't think there are any planned pictures. No. Are there any of their children coming? Uh, not to dinner that I'm aware of, no. Yep. Yes, uh, did the, can you shed any light on what the president said to uh, Karzai about the relationship that he's building with Ahmadinejad? Uh, <clears throat> I've not spoken with the president directly on that. I, I do think that I, I would say that the notion uh, that somehow, uh, in a stiff to us, uh, he went and got an invita invited somebody like Ahmadinejad to come to uh, Kabul. I would remind people that Afghanistan and Iran share uh, a border. I don't think it would be out of the ordinary for the Afghan government to deal with its neighbors. But you don't, you don't believe that any of the protocol or ceremonial aspect of that was at all aimed at? I, I don't, it, actually. It I don't. And is it, what is the relationship of the president with President Sarkozy in this respect? Do you feel like he, does the president feel like he gets these blunt assessments from President Carzo, uh, Sarkozy in private that we supposedly hear that he does? Is it a frank, I mean, what kind of, what kind of dialogue and exchange do the two have? Is it frank? Is it blunt? Is it critical of the other and how they handle certain things? No, no, I, I, I think, Chuck, if you look at the whole host of issues that I think they're going to discuss today uh, and that you'll hear the president speak about later, um, I think they've actually had a pretty good working relationship uh, on virtually every one of those issues. Um, obviously, uh, from the beginning of uh, our activities and the president's activities with the G20 uh, in trying to put together in Copenhagen um, uh, a, a deal on climate change, uh, they have increased their share uh, of troops in Afghanistan, uh, and they are a an exceedingly valuable coalition partner. Um, obviously, uh, on the, in the P5 plus one, they've played an extremely important role and will continue to as we try to marshal the support uh, of the world against uh, the acti activities of Iran. So I think they have a very good relationship. Uh, I think this will be, I think there is no doubt that uh, uh, President Sarkozy is a energetic and passionate leader, uh, and uh, what uh, what what you will see later today is what the president sees when they sit down one on one. I, 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 again, I think he's an energetic and passionate guy in in private and in public. So, and is is are you expecting France to play the lead role of of getting the EU together? on sanctions that can't be done through the United Nations so that when you get whatever minimal sanctions you can get done on Iran. I certainly States, think that they're the, are they the point? Well, look, I think they will, uh, and I think uh, obviously Great Britain will play a, a, a huge role uh, in that. And, and look, I, I think we will be, uh, we will be dependent on um, the eloquence and passion of President Sarkozy and others uh, in rallying the world for what, uh, what uh, will move to the UN. Lateral, Sorry? Unilateral? No, no, I mean uh, 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 through the United Nations. Through the United Nations. Yes, sir. Robert, when, when Bill mentioned the Netanyahu meeting last week, you began, you start, you said you were puzzled. Were you puzzled by the way it was portrayed in the press? Well, I'm puzzled by the notion that somehow uh, it, it's, a, uh, it's a bad deal to get two hours with the president uh, uh, almost entirely alone. That doesn't seem like a lot of punishment to me. There were a lot of Israeli reports that <clears throat> President Obama left the meeting suddenly saying as far as he was concerned it was over and he went to the residence to have dinner and he wasn't expecting uh, Netanyahu to remain in the White House and ask for another meeting. Was that accurate? Uh, I, I'm not going to get into the substance of what the two discussed. The president was... Uh, thought they had a good discussion uh, in the first meeting and was uh, was happy to come back uh, and see uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, in the Oval Office later than that. Can you describe the nature of the relationship as it now stands? Uh, 
uh, between the United States and Israel? And between President Obama and Prime Minister Netanyahu? Well, between the two countries, as I've said here uh, countless times, there is an unbreakable bond between these two countries. Uh, the United States has long been dedicated to the security of an important ally. Uh, and that doesn't, that hasn't in any way changed. Uh, as a result of having a mature bilateral relationship, there are going to be things that uh, this administration and countless previous administrations have disagreed with this Israeli government as, as they have with countless previous uh, Israeli governments. I think as the President, though, discussed yesterday uh, in his interview, that it is important for both sides to take the steps necessary to uh, find a way to come back to these proximity talks. That we are at an important moment and that either side walking away, both sides walking away, uh, does not further the important cause uh, that has to be undertaken uh, to see Middle East peace. Yeah. Um, settlement in East Jerusalem versus settlement in the West Bank. It is a tradition that previous U.S. administrations criticized openly settlements in the West Bank. It seems to be a new well, tone that explicitly also settlements in East Jerusalem are criticized. Well, again, Could you confirm that? Again, the, our, our view on this, as again the view of many administrations prior to ours, are that the issues around Jerusalem are important uh, and their final status issues. Uh, we, uh, we think that um, coming to the table, coming back to the table, developing the type of confidence and trust that both sides need in these proximity talks is important to building a process to getting to uh, those final status issues. You, you mentioned the, the, the G20 second ago in the context of Iran, but on financial regulations, Sarkozy clearly is pushing for tighter financial regulations. This meeting, is it going to be an agreement to disagree? Are they going to work to narrow those differences ahead of the next G8 or G20? Well, I think you've probably all seen the joint letter that was put out today. The joint letter was pretty thin rule. I mean, there's this diplomatic speech. I mean, there wasn't well, a whole look, lot there. Well, I will say this, Hans. We are uh, working with our international friends uh, on uh, on what we need to do on a global stage. We also want to make some progress on the rules of the road for what's going on right here at home. Uh, there have been disagreements between us and others about how you respond to an economic slowdown. Uh, those all played out. Uh, we feel quite comfortable with the decisions that we made. Uh, and understand that it's important uh, that we get rule, strong rules of the road going forward, uh, not just internationally, but uh, uh, first and foremost right here at home. Do you think there'll be a narrowing today between Sarkozy's well, position? I and will. Uh, I, I think that uh, this they'll have an opportunity to discuss that. I don't want to prejudge what happens prior to those discussions. No doubt this will be the sub, sub part of the subject of what they speak about uh, publicly today. Does there need to be a narrowing? Hold on a second. Yes, ma'am. Netanyahu comes back on the 14th. Do you expect the president to meet with him at that point? Uh, I don't have a bilat schedule yet for uh, the nuclear security summit. Does yes, there need to be a narrowing? Does the president feel that he and, and President Sarkozy agree on the scope of the new financial regulations that are needed? Well, again, I, I, I don't want to get too in depth into what might be discussed internationally uh, and whether things will or won't narrow until I have a better sense of that when we get a readout of what the two discuss rather than uh, conjecture. Again, I think it, the President believes it's extremely important that he and the Congress take affirmative actions to uh, institute strong rules of the road uh, going forward as it relates to our economy uh, in this country. Because uh, President Sarkozy's uh, remarks uh, a day or so ago suggested uh, he wasn't happy with, uh, as with the distance Mr. <coughs> Obama suggests he's willing to travel on that. With the, with the strength of the regulations, the president might be willing to go along with Well, that. again, uh, I, I think uh, we're enormously proud of uh, where the legislation is at this point uh, in the legislative process as it relates to our rules of the road. Uh, we've taken action throughout the G20 uh, on 
a balanced and sustainable growth model uh, and one that includes strong international rules of the road. We'll see what they have to say coming out of the meeting. Um, uh, but again, I, I think we've, uh, the president is enormously proud of the steps that we've taken thus far, understanding that uh, we've got to close the deal on this. On health care reform, AT&T, several other companies announced today they're taking charges uh, because of the uh, bill's reform of a, 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 a tax break for businesses that provide prescription drug coverage for their employees. Right. Now, the fact that they're taking the hit suggests they're going to continue providing the coverage. But well, there's a 28% subsidy to do so. There are also questions about whether this is a good time economically for big businesses to be taking these charges well, and whether that might discourage them let's from fully providing explain. the coverage let's down Let's fully road. explain what's, what's, what's happening here. As part of the Medicare, uh, Medicare Part D prescription drug legislation that passed in, I believe, 2003, uh, firms that provided coverage for retirees were given a 28% subsidy to, in order to continue providing that coverage, right? That amount of money was not added to a company's income, right? So uh, they, get, they got 28% to continue that. And under the previous law, which I think many considered to be a loophole, not only did they not get taxed on that 28%, but then they were able to write off the full amount spent on retiree prescription drug coverage, the money they kick in plus the 28% that taxpayers kick in. So um, all this does is allow uh, a company to simply write it off once by not counting it as income rather than both not counting it as income and getting able, being able to write it off. I, I would stress too, Wendell, that um, there are several billion dollars in the bill to help uh, on retiree prescription drug uh, benefits. There have been countless studies, one by the Business Roundtable, on the effect that business will see in lower premiums uh, as a result of health care reform. And I would point out that, understand that AT&T took a charge, basically uh, an accounting charge 30 years down the road, right? Uh, and the same day they did that, their stock went up. So uh, I, I do think that, again, they have to do this based on accounting rules, but I think uh, this has uh, maybe been framed as uh, uh, a lot more than meets the eye. Yes, ma'am. President traveling to uh, Maine and North Carolina later in the week. Why is he going to those two places to talk about health care and the economy? And wh why isn't he traveling to campaign with members who have tough races in 2010? Uh, because of the elections aren't in uh, March or April. So can you talk about why he's going to those two places? Uh, I, I don't know why Maine was selected. Uh, I think uh, one of the reasons was Karen Mills is our SBA administrator and she's from Maine. Uh, and we're going to focus on, again, on the small business aspects of uh, the health care reform. Uh, North Carolina is uh, one of the states in the country that has, uh, has seen uh, fairly big unemployment in terms of their rate uh, is uh, north of 10 percent. Uh, and uh, we will highlight uh, uh, a, a company that is seeing as a result of some of the investments that they've made in creating the jobs of the future, uh, increases that they've made uh, in their hiring roles uh, on Friday. You say the midterms aren't now, but weren't some of the less, one of the lessons of Virginia and Massachusetts <coughs> getting the president into campaign with... And there will be, uh, there's a thousand years before the, the next elections. You guys will have plenty of time to go cover them. Uh, the president is not focused on what happens uh, the uh, first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. Uh, we're focused on this Monday and this Tuesday. All good? Um, yes. 
yes, what did I want to ask? Um, did the president, in his, in his um, security briefings, has he been uh, told that the number of these kind of militia groups seems to be growing dramatically in the last year? Is that a, a concern? Uh, I, I, I don't know the degree to which uh, in, his, uh, in the daily intelligence briefings. In any of, in any of the I can certainly check and see if uh, I will check and see, and then I will check and see if that's anything that we would make available. Uh, go ahead. What is that uh, awkward music that somebody is? Uh, you can, you can just so you know, you can, you can change the ring on your phone. Just yes, <laughs> or less weird. Uh, go ahead. Two questions. One. Questions. One, credit card. <laughs> Did you think that was? I was probably very serious. I refer to that to Chuck. Go ahead. I have two questions. One, uh, President Obama made it possible. Uh, now it's a done deal between the United States and India, civil nuclear agreement, because one paper which was on his desk, one, two, three agreement, now is. Uh, so that means uh, how it's going to affect the U.S.-India relations and also. Is going to help uh, President and uh, Mr. Singh to come closer on this when they visit next week here and President visits India. Well, uh, the, the, obviously the President is a proponent of, uh, uh, of the agreement between the two countries, uh, supported it in the Senate, uh, and uh, is glad that in an important region of the world we're strengthening uh, a very close bilateral relationship Obviously, the president, as you know, and as, as many of you have seen, have spent uh, considerable time on our relationships with Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India uh, in order to see uh, security strengthened uh, and our mutual goals worked on uh, in an important region in the world. And second, the uh, president now is supposed to visit to Indonesia to make his uh, speech as well to the Arab and Muslim communities. Mm -hmm. Uh, which he had done in uh, uh, Turkey and in uh, Egypt. Mm -hmm. You think before he visits to Indonesia and Australia or India, he's going to make his final speech here, or there's a need for the Muslim and Arabic community, or to the Taliban? Well, uh, I don't. I don't know of any plans to do uh, that speech prior to uh, Indonesia, as when we slide the trip over to June, as we uh, as we had originally discussed. Yes, sir. Robert, is the president going to, as Senator Dodd wants to, focus on key Republicans and really make a uh, full court press on getting them in on the financial recovery regulations that Dodd is going to press, which we'll probably start having debate on in just a few weeks? Right. What's his plan? Well, look, I, I think the president, uh, the president obviously um, is uh, enormously supportive of the legislation moving forward. Um, reiterating again the, the desire and the need to have strong rules in place. Uh, I anticipate that not only the president but other members of the administration will reach out and talk with Republicans uh, in order to get them uh, on board supporting strong reforms. I will say this, uh, the, the, the president certainly is committed to reaching out but understanding that um, the desire is not to see a weaker set of rules. Uh, the desire is to see strong rules going forward to ensure that what happened in September and October of 2008 uh, can't happen uh, moving forward. And uh, that will certainly be uh, his focus. Christy? Robert, what does it mean that uh, Hanan Karzai is coming to the White House in May? Is, what's the meaning of that visit or the purpose of that visit? Say again? The what's the purpose? The uh, to, certainly to continue the important discussions uh, that the two presidents and the two countries have. Chris, I think it's important to understand we have said, we said this uh, before, we said this during the Afghanistan review, the president was quite clear about this on West Point, our security gains that are made through the heroic activities of our military can only be preserved with strong governance to, uh, to back those up. Uh, that's what the president has been focused on in, in, in this relationship. Uh, and that's the progress that we have been monitoring and hope to continue to see. Did, the pre did Karzai make any particular commitments to the president along the lines of merit-based appointments? Well, I, I will say that uh, there was a robust discussion on, um, on improving 
uh, national and subnational government, local and regional, uh, and uh, strengthening uh, efforts to root out, identify and root out corruption. Again, understanding, as the president said, just how important better governance is going forward in order to uh, match and preserve the se security gains that General McChrystal and our troops are making on the ground. And just one more thing, if I could. It, are there particular um, goal points or benchmarks that the president wants to have met by the time, he, by, by the time that meeting takes well, place Well, again, without getting into a lot of the substance uh, that the two discussed privately, obviously the president understands, I think both presidents understand what they'd like to see moving forward. Uh, we evaluate that constantly. Uh, again, the president is aware, as I've said two or three times now, that um, all that's being done militarily has to be matched on the governance side. And I think what the president and the team are focused on is ensuring that as we focus on what's happening military, militarily, we don't take our eyes off the ball in what has to happen on the ground uh, at all levels of the government in order to improve uh, the coordination of activities that are necessary uh, to preserve those security gains. Um, on immigration reform, Senator Graham the other day said that the White House has done almost nothing. I'm wondering what your response is to that and if there's anything that you plan to do to um, show the seriousness of purpose on immigration. Well, uh, I, I uh, not surprisingly would likely disagree with that characterization. Uh, I think the president has been a strong advocate and proponent uh, of immigration reform. Um, understanding again, this is, uh, um, I get asked all the time about bipartisanship, about, well, you know, you can't just, you guys can't just go this alone, right? Well, you, we, this is not a, a, an issue that's going to be decided by just getting all the Democratic members to support immigration reform. There has to be, uh, there has, there have to be Republicans that come aboard too. Uh, there have to be efforts uh, that Senator Graham is working on in order to uh, continue to convince those that supported uh, immigration reform in 2005 and 2006 in when it was voted on in, in the full Senate, that of those members that remain, that they're uh, ready, willing, and able to do this again. Um, those conversations the president uh, is likely to have with, uh, with, with Republican members uh, in the near future, uh, and we'll gauge whether or not it's possible um, to move forward on this issue. But, but this, can't, this, can't just be a, this can't just be President Obama. This can't just be President Obama and the Democratic Senate. It, quite frankly, probably can't just be President Obama, the Democratic Senate, and Lindsey Graham. Uh, it, it has to be others, and uh, uh, I think many will get an opportunity to weigh in on that. Is there any chance that the White House is going to write a bill? Uh, I think we put out a strong statement in support of many of the aspects of the legislation that Senator Graham is working on with Senator Schumer. Uh, I think they're still going through a full evaluative process of that. Uh, but obviously many aspects of that uh, the president finds uh, uh, greatly appealing. Yes, sir. I recall in Iran, uh, Secretary Clinton in Moscow <coughs> last week said that she would pursue sanctions that I think the word she used was uh, biting. So, uh, since then there have been these reports that maybe these sanctions are going to be watered down in order to get everybody on board. Does that mean they're going to be biting or not? What well, I, 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 uh, uh, I was amused that in two different publications, there were two different stories and two different views on the sanctions in each of those stories uh, uh, last, just last week. So uh, I, I guess it depends on uh, who leaks what. Uh, I would simply say that... Uh, and to whom? And to whom, right. Good point. Thank you, Mark, for adding that. I, I would say that uh, 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 we have instituted through the, through the tr uh, Treasury Department some unilateral sanctions uh, on uh, on Iran's military, and no doubt uh, one of the the topics that uh, President Sarkozy and President Obama will spend 
uh, a lot of time on today is uh, exactly what those sanctions look like moving forward, understanding that uh, uh, sanctions are part of an effort to get Iran to change their behavior. Uh, and that's, uh, that's certainly what we're looking for. In particular, can you talk about two things that have been discussed, uh, the cutting off of uh, gasoline imports yeah, to I, Iran and also shipping lanes and commercial? I, I'm, I'm not going to get into to specifics at this point. April. Robert, um, the March 31st deadline is just hours away for the black farmers, and there is a concern by the CBC and the black farmers uh, that the deadline will not be met, and they are pushing for an extension of the deadline, and they are yeah. hopeful that this White House is uh, looking for an extension as well. Is that the case? I, I, do, I, I uh, don't have an update on this, but let me check with, uh, uh, with OMB and others on this. So, if I'm correct, the President did want this to happen by March 31st, correct? Yes. So, I mean... So, let me check on what I just said of, as it related to the first question that you answered. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, over successive weeks, Congressman Barney Frank has uh, asked the White House to clarify whether it would like to see legislative action taken this year on Don't Ask, Don't Tell. He's said that, you know, direction from the White House has been muddled and then at one point said that you guys were actually sort of ducking whether or not uh, you wanted to see legislative action taken on repeal. Would the President like to see well, that law? Well, Kara, I would just say this. I don't think what uh, Admiral Mullen and Secretary Gates have enunciated on this. Uh, appears muddled to anyone. Uh, I, I don't, uh, there is a process that's in place uh, to move forward uh, on the President's commitment to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Uh, I, I don't, uh, uh, Admiral Mullen is the first chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to sit up in front of Congress and say that the law ought to be repealed. Not, not, not somebody who's retired, not somebody who's long passed their commitment of serving their country, but somebody who, uh, who sat up there and said that, and, and, and Secretary Gates uh, and the commission uh, at the Pentagon have taken some important steps. We're following that process. Uh, we'll see where the legislative road takes us uh, as we build, continue to build support uh, to keep that, the commitment that the President has made. So, so the feel perfectly comfortable letting the next Congress uh, take well, that up? Well, I, I, again, we're going to follow the process and the path that, uh, that are underway uh, with the clear direction that the President has given to repeal this. Thank you, Robert. Okay. Does the, has the President had any reaction to the ongoing, current crisis in the Catholic Church? Uh, I have not talked to him about this. Does the White House have any response uh, let to me, uh, the let, let, me, uh, let me see what... Uh, what, what folks have here, and, uh, and I will uh, make sure I have that for tomorrow. All right, thanks, guys.